Hi students, this is Kartik Trivedi and you are watching a lecture series of applied thermodynamics with students. So now in these videos, we're going to see velocity diagram and work done equation for centrifugal compression. And then we're going to see one important topic that is called surging and choking in centrifugal compressor. So let us start this video. So here you can see that I have drawn velocity diagram. Now to understand this velocity diagram in the fluid mechanics, you have understand impact of jet. You have learned the chapter impact of jet. Okay, then you learn the chapter hydraulic turbine. So if your those your concept is clear, then you can understand over here. So the concept of impact of jet hydraulic turbine should be needs to be clear before understanding this. Okay, so if you don't understand anything, then go to the impact of jet chapter of your previous semester and then come over here so okay so here now i have drawn the one of the blade so this is the blade of centrifugal compressor so here you can see that this is called inlet velocity triangle because this is the inlet of the blade and this is outlet of the blade so this triangle is known as outlet velocity triangle okay so in centrifugal compressor you know that the fluid is enter actually so whenever the fluid is enter actually so it will be something like this so v1 is equal to vf1 vf1 is known as flow velocity v F means flow velocity. So now this blade is moving in this direction. So you can see that this is the U1 velocity. So whenever blade moves in the whenever the blade moves uh, in the direction, that direction will be U1. So the blade is moving in this direction. So direction of U1 will be something like this. Okay. So this is called U1 uh, velocity. This is called linear velocity. Okay. So this is the U1. And our velocity the axial direction so whenever there is an axial uh, because the our in centrifugal compressor you know that the fluid enter actually air is enter actually so that's why whenever the axial condition is there v1 is equal to vf1 so here the v1 is equal to vf1 and always remember that the v1 is the resultant of u1 and we are one so here you can see that this is the u1 this is the v1 so we know that this is the resultant of u1 and so the final thing that is we remain with is vr1 so you have to connect vr1 something like this vr1 is radial velocity so this is vr1 is known as radial velocity here vw1 that is called wall velocity now v1 vw1 is equal to v1 cos alpha 1 vf1 is equal to v1 sin alpha 1 so here you can see that alpha 1 is the angle between v1 and u1 so here you can see that angle is 90 degree so vw1 is equal to v1 cos 90 cos 90 you know that that is 0 cos 90 so that's why vw1 component is 0 over here and vf1 is equal to v1 sin alpha 1 so sin alpha 1 alpha 1 90 sin 91 so that's why vf1 is equal to v1 okay so vf is a flow velocity so this is how you have to do always remember v1 is your resultant of u1 and r1 so this is the radial okay so whenever there is an axial entry v1 is equal to vf1 this is the our fluid direction this is the our blade direction in which it is moving so u1 will be something like this so this is v1 this is u1 and we know that v1 is the resultant of u1 and vr1 so we are remaining with vr1 so we have to uh, draw it something like this beta1 is the angle between vr1 and u1 now let's see uh, outlet velocity triangle so here i have considered one theoretical thing let's say if the fluid is leaving radially so whenever the fluid is re re le uh, leaving the radially something like this in radial directions in radial direction you have vf2 equal to vr2 okay so vf2 equal to vr2 now you know that our blade is moving in this direction that's why u2 is this much so you can see that this is the u2 so you know that i already told you v2 is the resultant of u2 and we are two so we are two is this v2 is this so remaining your, your uh, u2 is you already this okay and now this is the our we have to equal to we are two because we know that this is radial direction it will coming like this so we are taken like this so only thing we remain with v2 so v2 is something like this because we know that v2 is resultant of we are two and vw2 now as we have done over here so vw2 here you can see that this is the u2 equal to vw2 okay so now let's see over here uh, here the beta 2 is 90 degree okay so here the beta 2 is 90 degree now what is beta 2 beta 2 is the angle between u2 and vr2 now alpha 2 is what alpha 2 is angle between v2 and u2 okay so it is something like that now 
let us see over here we know that vw2 is equal to what vw2 is equal to v2 cos alpha 2 so v2 cos alpha 2 so this much so that's why the, here we have written u2 equal to vw2 same way vf2 is equal to v2 sin alpha 2 so here you can see that v2 sin alpha 2 so that will be this so that's why i have written vf2 equal to vr2 so this is the logic so this is inlet diagram this is outlet diagram okay now work done by the impeller on the air so this is the equation that you have to remember work done by the impeller is mass flow rate bracket vw2 u2 minus vw1 u1 but here you can see that vw1 is 0 why vw1 is 0 because vw1 is equal to v1 cos alpha 1 and alpha 1 is 90 degree so this is 0 so work done is equal to mass flow rate into vw2 u2 but here we know that vw2 is equal to u2 so in place of vw2 put u2 over here so it will be mass flow rate u2 square now let us see another triangle this triangle is there when alpha and beta 1 both are 90 degree let us take another velocity triangle when alpha 1 is 90 degree but beta 2 is less than 90 degree so here you can see that alpha 1 90 degree so inlet velocity triangle is same so no need to explain again so this is the same thing but here you see this here you can see that beta 2 is less than 90 degree so it is something like this so now your vr2 is like this okay and you know that the blade is moving in this direction so this will be your u2 so this is totally u2 so this is vr2 this is u2 i already told you v2 is the resultant of vr2 and u2 so this will be the v2 so you have to connect it something like this now what you have to do here vf2 so you know that vf2 is equal to what v2 sin alpha 2 so this is the vf2 that's why vf2 is over here okay and what you have to do vw2 is equal to v2 cos alpha 2 so this will be your v2 this is alpha 2 this is v2 so this will be your v2 cos alpha 2 so here you can see that vw2 is equal to v2 cos alpha 2 so v2 cos alpha 2 so this is you can see that over here this will be your vw2 over here why because vf2 is over here so that's why this will become vw2 so always remember v2 is a resultant or v2 this the two component of v2 is vf2 and vw now some of you, you might have a question sir the vf2 is this much and why vw2 is not this much always remember we have divided v2 into two component one is flow velocity and another is you can say the wall velocity so this is vw2 and your v2 is something like this your v2 is something like this so always remember the vf2 and vw2 are nothing but the component of v2 so that's why if vf2 is like this then vw2 should be like this so that is the logic over here same way you can see that vf2 is like this v2 is this so that that's why vw should be like this so that's why vf2 vw2 so v2 is made of two component vf2 vw2 here v2 vf2 vw2 okay so u2 is big this much and vw2 is this much now you can understand the logic you know that the alpha is the angle between v2 and u2 beta 2 is the angle between v u2 and vr2 so now from this triangle can you write tan beta 2 so tan beta 2 is what vf2 upon this much this much so you know that this is u2 this is vw so this much is equal to u2 minus vw2 so this this so this will be what u2 minus vw2 vf2 upon u2 minus vw2 okay so now if we do cot beta 2 so what will be the inverse of this so this will be inverse so the it will be like u2 minus vw2 upon vf2 now let us make vw2 subject so if you make vw2 subject over here so it will be u2 minus vf2 cot beta 2 so now for unit mass flow rate so we know the work done is equation is mass flow rate vw2 u2 if i take unit mass flow rate so mass flow rate equal to 1 so work done is equal to vw2 u2 but here vw2 is u2 minus vf2 cot beta 2 so put here put 
to v w two is equal to u two minus v up to cot beta. So it will be u two square minus v up to u two cot beta. So this work done equation is for alpha one equal to ninety degree and beta two is less than ninety degree. So what you have to do, you have to just remember this diagram. There is no other way because this topic is come in fluid power engineering where we learn all the velocity triangle. But here they make syllabus in such a way that they make they make so many things together. So just don't worry about that. Just remember if you don't if you can't remember just mug it up. But just remember this thing, okay? And now we gonna see another topic which is known as surging and choking in centrifugal compressor. So let us understand this surging and choking. Surging and choking. What I have done? I have made a one diagram. So we know that in compressor, what we have? We have impeller, okay? So what is fluid is enter actually then impeller which provides kinetic energy and pressure energy after what after impeller the fluid is going to the what diffuser diffuser guide the fluid and increases pressure energy then fluid where goes to where then it goes to the outer casing and then go to the delivery pipe so that's why here I make small diagram of compressor so first impeller this is was diffuser and this is outlet after that we have control bar and then the compressor will go to the receiver and this receiver is also known as storage tank is also known as down. Stream. Okay, so here I have made one diagram. <laughs> in x-axis I have taken mass flow rate, in y-axis I have taken pressure ratio. So here you can see that this is you can see that this is the condition when mass flow rate is when where is the maximum uh, uh, maximum flow rate. F is the theoretical maximum flow rate point. So theoretical maximum flow rate means maximum flow rate is means here this is the control valve. When I open control valve totally fully means the maximum the air is going with the maximum flow rate. So when it is open when this control valve is fully open. So F is shows the condition when con this control valve is fully open because from here to here the air is moving and when I open control valve fully so this is called so so is the maximum open point so the f is known as theoretical maximum flow flow rate point now here the e is called actual maximum flow rate point p is known as maximum pressure ratio point and this is the point a where you can see that mass flow rate is zero why mass plus mass flow rate is zero this is the point a so this shows the condition when control valve is fully closed so when i make the control valve fully closed that means no air is moving so that's why here you can see that at point a mass flow rate is zero but here you can see that the even though i fully close the control valve mass flow rate is zero but there is some pressure ratio why pressure ratio because you know that when you close this control valve but here in the impeller there is some air tripped in the impeller so due to that the pressure is increasing because the air is trapped in the blades so that is why you have some pressure so that is why here at point a when the mass flow rate is zero you have some pressure okay so let us start with here let's say at your point d so this point d shows the some partly open control valve so the here at point D, e, the control valve is partly open. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to close it little bit. So here, at points uh, after closing it little bit, I come to the point C. So here you can see that at point D, e, the pressure ratio is this much. After closing again further, the pressure ratio is increased. Now, what I do? I'm at point C. Now I'm again partly close the control valve. So I read to the point B where I get the maximum pressure ratio. Okay. So that is why here point B I'm getting the maximum maximum pressure ratio that is known as maximum pressure ratio point so here you will get the higher efficiency now what i will do again at point b again i am going to partly close the control valve now what will happen now if i will go further like this but here you can see that if i will wait point over here but the pressure ratio is decrease so what will happen at point b you have maximum pressure now i close uh, i will uh, close the control valve further what will happen? I will reach over here, but the pressure ratio is decreasing. Now, what will happen? I will let you tell. So, what will happen when the when you come at this point, your pressure ratio decreases? Then what will happen? So, let me tell you. Let's say it initially here the P2 pressure is 10 bar. So your air is moving with the 10 bar pressure over here. So here also the pressure 10 bar. But what will happen when you reach to the point over here your pressure will be decreasing at this point so this will become 6 bar let's say this is 6 bar but what will happen here the pressure is more in storage tank so what will happen the reverse flow will started happening so from here to here the reverse flow is started to happening and that is condition is known as surging and that is undesirable because we want to send the air from here to here but at this point your pressure
pressure ratio decreases, so here this pressure is less and this pressure is more. So this is uh, the reverse flow of the air is started to happen that can damage your compression. So that thing is known as surging. So reverse flow of air. Now what will happen after a certain time? Here the air is coming, so this pressure is going to be let's say here eight, and this will become six bar. Again, the direction again the air will now go starting to happening in original direction. This is to and fro motion is happening of air that is known as surging. So when you go from point B to this side, so this all region from B to A is known as surging region. So where is the reverse flow of air started happening and that is undesirable. So you should be work between point B to E. So that is the useful operating range. Okay. Now what will happen? Let's say you are at point D. Now I will again going to open further control valve. So when I am going to open further open the control valve, so you know that when the control valve is open, mass flow rate is increased. So at point D you have mass flow rate this much. At point E you have a let's say at point over here. So you have this much of mass flow rate. Okay. You know that the actual theoretical maximum flow rate is what? At point F when, when control valve is fully open. But what will happen when you open the control valve at you are at point D and now you open further the control valve you are to the point E. But at this time what will happen the velocity of air is, <laughs> is increasing. Why? Because at point E is mass flow rate increase and you know that mass flow rate is equal to what? Rho A V. So mass flow rate is increasing. Velocity is increasing. And at point E you will reach at the sonic velocity. So sonic velocity means when your mass Mach number will becomes one. So Mach number is what? Velocity of air upon velocity of sound, and that will becomes one. So velocity of air is become velocity of sound. So this is the maximum velocity that you can have. So that is why point E is known as actual maximum flow rate. You cannot go further the point E. So that is why E is known as actual maximum flow rate point because at E you have reached to the maximum velocity that is solid velocity. So from point E you cannot go. Further. So that is why point E is known as choking point. So this process is known as choking. So this is the phenomena of surging and choking. So I hope you will like this video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.